Rugby league bans trans athletes as other sports follow bombshell FINA decision. Rugby league has banned transgender athletes from international competition for the time being, while World Athletics President Sebastian Coe has hinted track and field could follow swimming in bringing in a tougher policy on transgender stars taking part in women's events. The Daily Telegraph reports the International Rugby League has decided players who transition from male to female will not be allowed to play in sanctioned international events until further research is conducted, ruling them out of this year's World Cup in England. In the interests of avoiding unnecessary welfare, legal and reputational risk to International Rugby League competitions and those competing therein, the IRL believes there is a requirement and responsibility to further consult and complete additional research before finalising its policy, the IRL said. The IRL reaffirms its belief that rugby league is a game for all and that anyone and everyone can play our sport. It is the IRL's responsibility to balance the individual's right to participate, a long-standing principle of rugby league and at its heart from the day it was established, against perceived risk to other participants, and to ensure all are given a fair hearing. The IRL's call comes after swimming's governing body, the International Swimming Federation announced on Sunday it intends to set up an open category to allow transgender athletes to compete in a separate class. According to FINA's new policy, transgender athletes will not be allowed to compete in female events unless they can prove they have not experienced any element of male puberty. That ruling came in response to American swimmer Leah Thomas becoming the first known transgender athlete to win an elite U.S. collegiate title in March. Thomas, a freestyle specialist, competed for the University of Pennsylvania men's team from 2017 to 19. Cycling's governing body, the Union Cycliste Internationale, has also toughened its rules on transgender eligibility by doubling the time period before a rider transitioning from male to female can compete. My responsibility is to protect the integrity of women's sport and we take that very seriously, and if it means that we have to make adjustments to protocols going forward, we will, said Mr. Ko, who was present in Budapest for FINA's Swimming World Championships on Sunday. I've always made it clear, if we ever get pushed into a corner to that point where we're making a judgment about fairness or inclusion, I will always fall down on the side of fairness. We see an international federation asserting its primacy in setting rules, regulations and policies that are in the best interest of its sport. This is as it should be. We have always believed, and repeated constantly, that biology trumps gender and we will continue to review our regulations in line with this. Under World Athletics rules, transgender women have to show they have low testosterone levels for at least 12 months before competition. We continue to study, research and contribute to the growing body of evidence that testosterone is a key determinator in performance, added Mr. Ko. And have scheduled a discussion on our DSD and transgender regulations with our council at the end of the year, it came as former British Olympic swimmer Sharon Davies called on other sports to follow the example of FINA and ban transgender female athletes from competition. Davies, 59, who won Olympic silver at the 1980 Games and has emerged as a vocal critic of allowing trans women to take part in female athletic events, applauded FINA's stunning decision on Sunday, the NY Post reports. I can't tell you how proud I am of my sport, FINA and the FINA president for doing the science, asking the athletes, coaches and standing up for fair sport for females, she tweeted after the governing body's vote. Swimming will always welcome everyone no matter how you identify but fairness is the cornerstone of sport. But according to Davies, more work remains to be done to level the playing field in other sports as well, especially cycling. Unveiling its stricter rules last week, the UCI cited recent studies indicating that it takes a minimum of two years for muscle mass and strength to adapt to female levels in people undergoing a male to female transition, but the UCI admitted that it may not be possible to eliminate all individual advantages held by trans cyclists. I think what cycling has done is disgraceful, Davies told Daily Mail Sports. They have basically said they are happy for female athletes to compete with a disadvantage. I'm afraid that is not acceptable in a world where we don't believe in sex discrimination. British transgender writer Emily Bridges, who began transitioning last year and was blocked by the UCI from competing at an elite championship in April, pushed back against the decision, arguing that it is wrong to believe she would have any advantage over her female rivals, according to The Guardian. The debate over transgender athletes reached a fever pitch in March when Thomas, swimming for the University of Pennsylvania, made history by becoming the first transgender NCAA champion in Division I. Thomas has expressed a desire to compete for a spot at the Olympics in 2024, but the new FINA rule would block her participation from the Paris Games or any other elite races. 
FINA's decision, the toughest by any Olympic sports body to date, was made during its extraordinary General Congress in Budapest after members heard a report from a transgender task force comprising leading medical, legal and sports figures. The new eligibility rules for elite competitions state that male to female transgender athletes are eligible to compete only if they have transitioned before age 12 and have not experienced any part of male puberty. The policy was passed with about 71% majority after it was put to the members of 152 national federations with voting rights at the Congress. FINA also will create a working group to establish an open category for trans athletes in some events. We have to protect the rights of our athletes to compete, but we also have to protect competitive fairness at our events, especially the women's category at FINA competitions," said FINA President Hussein Al Musalam. FINA will always welcome every athlete. The creation of an open category will mean that everybody has the opportunity to compete at an elite level. This has not been done before, so FINA will need to lead the way. I want all athletes to feel included in being able to develop ideas during this process. Athlete Ali, an advocacy group for LGBTQI people in sport, condemned FINA's decision. FINA's new eligibility criteria for transgender athletes and athletes with intersex variations is discriminatory, harmful, unscientific and not in line with the 2021 IOC principles, they tweeted. If we truly want to protect women's sports, we must include all women. Peace.